We're shooting a Q&A. Extra battery. I have plenty of space on the hard drive, I think. Phone for the questions. Now we just need the gear. What are we doing? I don't know. Oh, oh, this is a legitimate question. We're uh, finding a place to film our Q&A video. I yeah. that was more of a where are we going and why are we in this hand basket video. <laughs> the hand basket being everything around us. We were gonna wait for better weather to shoot an SHR Q&A video, but the people want it, so we're gonna go drive around and find a pretty place to find. Oh, why are we in this hand basket? <laughs> We think we're here. Oh, by the way, I uh, meant to mention this is one of the more recent Sasquatch sightings in the States occurred here. <laughs> it's quite smoky, but here we are. What's up, guys? This is Relish, and here with Dylan, aka Scrambler. Scrambler, as of uh, post our hike, we just wrapped up the Sierra high route a few days ago and uh, fielded a bunch of questions online to do a quick Q&A about it. And so we're going to sit here and uh, try and answer some of y'all's questions and uh, probably ramble a lot. So Yeah, I think we're both good at that. I think you're better at rambling. That's that. true. I and especially since we haven't adjusted back to society yet. I don't think yet. it's even close, honestly. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> All right, so our first question is, where do you start when planning a trip mm -hmm. like this? Um, frankly, I did most of the planning for this trip. I think that's fair. Yeah, you're definitely the logistics guy. Yeah, um, and then invited Dylan to come along, um, which I've planned many more through hikes than I've hiked. <laughs> Um, in varying in COVID 2020 to varying degrees um, but usually I'll start with trying to get the conditions of the trail so understand where the trail is in the contiguous I don't know or in North America and then uh, I'll try and find the general conditions so how good is the tread of the trail um, what are you usually walking on how much daylight will you have uh, what are the historic average temperatures, precipitation, snow, etc. Um, on the trail? Uh, what's the elevation like? And all of this uh, is, I actually have a bunch of videos on a lot of these things on how I go and find that stuff. Um, but try and, and figure out that, and then from there I usually build a map. Depending on the quality of maps that already exist, I'll go onto Caltopo and build my own maps um, that include information that I want, waypoints that I want specifically. Um, then you start getting permits, looking at logistics, how are you going to get to the area, and then specifically how to get to each trailhead. Then resupplies, looking at what towns are nearby. For most trails there's already a lot of this content is at least partially put together and then I go kind of fact check it or double check. Um, yeah, figure out how long, based on the conditions I mentioned earlier, how much daylight, how hard the trail is, uh, how many miles I expect to average a day, and then start figuring out how many days of food I need to carry, and so on and so forth. So, um, there's not a super clean process. Kind of all these things turn in tandem on one another, but uh, that is maybe a quick overview. Uh, I'll maybe link below to some of my other videos about the specifics of uh, some of the elements of trip planning. I guess just what I can chime in from being like an observer and more or less a recipient of your trail planning. Um, what I always see is standing out, and maybe this is particularly helpful the more north you go, but uh, weather conditions of when they allow you to start and then I think a lot bases around how much daylight you have yeah. Like right now we're approaching fall so days are getting 12 hours But when you're hiking in you know late June or July in Washington, you have 16 hours of daylight big, big, um, big mile <clears throat> So those were things that stood out to me when planning and yeah. When you have daylight that or weather that affects the start time which affects daylight uh, which affects 
you know, how far you're going each day. Yeah. That can be a big thing in kind of calendaring it. It out. makes a huge difference, you know. It's yeah. Like and then obviously the, 15 the hours tread of the trail 12 is, is massive. Our next question is how do you train? Uh yeah. How do you train? Well, more or less we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I going into it, I'm in relatively good shape. I'm actually wearing a half marathon shirt, so I do some some distance running, um, hiking quite a bit, but I mean both of us being living at sea level, most of our hikes are nowhere above five thousand feet. Um so we're in good shape, but not spectac spectacular shape. Yeah. Um and I was surprised how how quickly just being on trail was like enough to like train for the trip. Yeah. I mean, our bodies adjusted fairly quickly. Yeah, and I remember surprised. our first day after our resupply, we got trail at 10 a.m. And I think we had our longest miles the whole day, or yeah, the, of like, the, like the whole trip up to that point. Or, yeah. yeah um, but in regards to training, I mean, just being athletic, getting out and doing hikes is probably plenty. Um, just knowing that you might struggle the first few days because I think the jump from 5,000 to 10,000 is significant, let alone sea level to that much. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I was, I thought it would be harder than it was because I'm in decent shape, but I was definitely nervous about it. Yeah. I think you, you were far more nervous about elevation than I was. Yeah. Next question. How did you navigate? Did you use GPS mm. app or maps or, and a compass? Um, we only used our phones. I think I would think about it differently if there was only one of us. But since we had mm, two phones, yeah. we had a redundancy. So I built the maps on Caltopo, and then we both downloaded them offline onto our phones independently. Um, for a tr for a route, you really do need maps um, because a lot of it you're actually route finding. Um, yeah, if I had gone by myself, I think I probably would have printed maps. I never would have had to use them unless my phone either died or was broken or whatever. Um, yeah. But since we had two of us, even if someone's phone somehow perished, the other one would be around to keep us alive. So just use um, maps built in CalTopo based off of maps um, that people who have hiked the trail previously, Andrew Skirka, Steve Roper, basically took uh, their maps, inputted them into CalTopo, added some of my own um, details, and then we downloaded it offline. Yeah. What do you think about when you hike? <laughs> um, I feel like half the time nothing. Uh, like every time I'm going uphill and like struggling, it is my mind's blank or I have some like song mantra in my head that's just going over and over and over on repeat. Um, if it's a boring hot downhill descent in the afternoon my mind is also blank uh i'm otherwise thinking about food um we're making weird funny jokes about the wilderness like plump marmots and <laughs> insert other weird things we talk about and then there's the occasion like we it's not hard enough where we have to focus on breathing but it's hard enough where we don't want to be there and we'll just be like super in depth in some like geopolitical conversation yeah, about the state of the world and then all of a sudden like two hours go by yeah but a lot of times i mean the time just passes and yeah. i also find it funny when like we're um we'll have a conversation we don't talk for 30 minutes and then you just like continue your next sentence as if it was just said. <laughs> it's like, Definitely you, you don't need to like restart the conversation because nothing else has happened in yeah. those 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think um, I generally, it's not interesting things that are going through my mind. If it's intense uphill, you're just like focused on that. And it's, you're just exerting yourself. So you don't have, it's like when you're playing a sport, you don't have the mental capacity to be thinking about something else. Yeah, you're when you're going uphill, like you're just like focused on that. Yeah. Same thing with intense downhill. And off trail, even more so because mm. your footing is much more uneven and kind of technical. You have to be thinking about each step. Um, and then the rest of my brain power is usually either food or I do definitely spend a lot of time just computing miles and how far we are from the current place and what time it is and how many more miles I can expect to get in that day. Um, that's definitely a significant part. Um, and then you will like sing in your head 
Yeah. And I will recite poetry to myself in my head. Um, specifically Robert's service. I know, I think I know have like 14 long poems memorized or something like that. So Jeez. I'll uh, oftentimes just recite those to myself and they're very entertaining. Um, that's probably the most interesting thing that goes in that I'm ever thinking about on trail. Um, and for me, it's Legally Blonde, the musical. Legally Blonde. When we're approaching mile. Robert's 175. Service. 175. <laughs> Dark times. <laughs> yeah. But I think 90% of the time I'm not thinking about anything noteworthy. Yeah. That's... Which is kind of depressing because you like go to out and you think you're going to solve your own problems and all the world's problems yeah. and everyone else thinks that too and then you're like i was just thinking about cheeseburgers yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. could see it <clears throat> um any other things that you think about i think as you are like computing miles on the trail i like will stare at the stick on the ground and like think about the journey of the stick or like look at the rock formation and be like oh wow i wonder what the glaciers did to carve that like i think i'm more not even enthralled in nature, just like specifically like looking at something and just wondering about its journey in the world. Yeah. So. And then both of us are often thinking about marmots and bears. Yes. Wildlife in general is kind of a yeah. highlight. And yeah. Always disappointed when we don't see them. But we definitely spent a lot of time consumed with seeing big horde sheep or wanting to see big yeah. horde sheep. Yeah. Anytime there was good footing and there was like a rocky slope with good lighting, I would just like stare as we were walking. And then when we were more focused on our footing, it was like, oh, what marmots are in the immediate vicinity? <laughs> and are they plump? Are they ready for hibernation? Will they be are safe? Are they prepared? What was your average m mileage per day? Uh, I think for the days that we were on trail. So mm. our trip encompassed 12 total days, but the first day was a half day. And then uh, our first resupply in Mammoth Lakes was kind of a half day. We didn't get on until... Oh, 10 yeah, or 11 yeah. yeah and then our resupply over bishop's pass in parcher's resort was a, a full day of hiking it was like 15 miles but none of them were miles on our route so i think we covered like 200 miles in like 11 or 12 days so we still actually averaged fairly high if you just mm -hmm. count days yeah. on trail but we were averaging like 17 miles i think yeah 17 or 18 and hardest or easiest parts of the SHR. Mm. Hardest part, 100% day two. Um, so this is not the pass. The pass is up there. I just want to take a nap. Dylan wants to take a nap. So do I, honestly. This has been harder than I thought it would be. I hope it... Ooh, I hope I rise to the occasion. We'll say that. <sighs> Today is almost certainly the hardest day of hiking I've had in my life. We made what? 13 miles in a whole day yeah, and cool. so you're we still acclimating um, we got up over 11,000 feet I thought I was drinking a ton of water did not have enough and was like mildly dehydrated getting over yeah, sky right. pilot coal um, and we were just so gassed I mean I think I don't know if you, this still holds true for you but it does for me I think that was the hardest day of hiking I've ever had in my life yeah, that, that probably was, was the hardest day of hiking. Uh, that was a n tough day. Yeah, and then I think with the novelty of like the route, <clears throat> there is also just the mental drain of like, oh my gosh, can we do this? Because we struggled so much with a full day of hiking. Um, and I wouldn't say like I was mentally in a low place. Definitely at the top of Sky Pilot, Pol Sky Pilot Coal when I was dehydrated, I was, but that was definitely the toughest part. And then highlight. I I think it had to have been that morning going up Glacier Pass. I can't even with this. Uh, it's insane. It's bonkers. Oh my God, this is insane. So there's Glacier Pass right there. So that's the Sierra Crest and that's where we've been headed all morning. And we're, I'm kind of bummed this pass is over. I've been having such a good time. Uh, yeah. Dude, this is fucking bonkers, man. <laughs> it's like every time you did this section of class three scrambling, it was a beautiful like basin. And then you do another section of class three scrambling and it was an even more beautiful. And I mean, that was like completely euphoric, but the whole day overall was, <laughs> was good. Was wonderful. Yeah, we crushed it that day. I think that for me, day two 
was is probably objectively one of the hardest days of hiking I've ever had. But I was super low going over Mather Pass. We made it to the top of Mather Pass. I'm very tired. More tired than I should be. Now we need to go way down there. Ugh, way down there. So we can eat lunch in the shade. I got checked I by the ranger like and you were just crushed behind and not happy. I, I don't know why. I mean, it was we had spent yeah, a few miles before at the beginning of the day off trail, but then joined the JMT and just the whole climb up to Mather Pass, I was just crushed. I remember it being pretty hard on the PCT and didn't want to kind of like jinx it and remember mm -hmm. that it was hard or speak it into existence. But man, I really struggled. I mean, I was like constantly get stopping at every switchback corner and heaving and I think it was hot, but I think so, like, um, subjectively or mentally, that was probably my hardest yeah, I think few you, yeah. hours. And then my high point, beating Glacier Pass is yeah. super tough to beat, but there's so many awesome moments. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it's just, it's almost, there's almost too much beauty where you just become, not numb, but you definitely become desensitized to how epic yeah. every single place is just epic. Euphoric is like the best word to describe that it's day for me. What is your plan of action when something goes wrong? Um, I am like someone who is ultra, it's just like natural for me to have a million backup plans like A through G. Um, that's not a million, but that's a lot. I was usually pretty well aware of when we hit uh, another section that was like a day's hike out from somewhere if we needed to uh, exit trail for any reason and was pretty well aware of okay, when are we going to be off trail? When are we going to be on trail or close to a trail? Um, and then I carry a uh, Garmin or Delrome InReach, I guess. It's one of the older brands. Um, and that I can text anyone in the world if I need help. It has its SOS function. So in reality, we were never, there was never a worry of what to do if something goes wrong. I think in general, my philosophy is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Don't be an idiot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, is, is the best policy there. Mm. Then yeah. you just have to get really unlikely. Like, unlucky. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. What's your wind down routine? Ooh. Booze, huh? books, stargazing, etc. You want me to take that one? Yeah. Go yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm usually a pretty big routine guy. Um, so when we, when we get to camp, I mean, while you still have like the energy of walking, it's just like, okay, get the sleeping bag set up, get the food out you're gonna eat, set aside the food for the next day. Um, but I, I think I found a lot of peace in, like once I do all those camp chores as I call them, yeah. just like sitting and just like taking time to just like be present in what's there. And you're not thinking about walking, you're not thinking about how far you need to go the next day, you're not thinking about your food, you're just sitting there. Um, I would usually pair that with stretching so I wasn't like super tight or tense. I, I think we both kind of did this. We'd give ourselves a little piece of food that was like our treat to ourselves. So for me, that was Pop-Tarts every day. You, that was usually Nutter Butters and Peanut M&Ms, I think. Mm. Um, and so like having that little indulgence at the end of the day, I liked, we, we kind of stopped towards the end i don't know if it's because we finished the reading or we were just that tired but oh yeah uh we we actually read about the sierras that we were in every night so that was like a cool way to learn about the history feel connected to the place that we're in and then you'd hear these familiar things that got scouted by you know leconte or whoever um and that was like a a cool way to unwind and just like made the experience more special and more yeah, holistic richer. Or in doing that, if we were really tired, it was very, very easy to just pass right out. Yeah. Between mm -hmm. 7.30 and 8, pretty much. You're just so tired. Mm -hmm. Basically set things up, eat, try to find the discipline to stretch a little bit, yeah. and journal. Oh, that's, yeah. That's what journaling, we both do, journaling. is just try yeah. and write down the events of the day. Because otherwise it can all just kind of like blend together into this one long memory of yeah. indistinct hiking. So... Well, I think we both did that every single night. That's almost like just putting a bookend on the day because it's like, yeah. these are the things we did. These are the passes we went over. Here's how my experience felt. And there's like a catharsis in that of all these things that are building up when your mind's blank hiking, like yeah. we talked about earlier. You just kind of like come to peace and then fall asleep. Peace.
just fall asleep. What's up guys? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Subscribe if you're into it. If you want to, drop a comment down below. I'd be happy to get back to you. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later.